Let's talk about time zones. So the Earth is rotating, and that rotation is directly related to our time. The Earth rotates at the equator at a rate of about a thousand miles per hour. If we use that math, we can figure out that every hour the Earth completes a 15 degree rotation. If we then factor in that the Earth rotates 24 hours in a day, our total trip after one day is 360 degrees. To help us mark each hour, we use lines of longitude. They're imaginary, but there are 24 of them. So they mark the hours that, we, that occur in the day. They also tell us our time zones. And this is not by coincidence. This was agreed upon by the countries to, to kind of make this marker help us determine what time it is on Earth. So if we think about the Earth in space, the lit half is the one facing the sun, and the other half is the one away. And if we attach times to it, if you are facing the sun, and the sun is directly pointed at you, that's 12 p.m. And if you are on the opposite side, that's 12 a.m. And the earth is rotating counterclockwise, so we can figure out, well, if I'm going from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., that's where 6 p.m. is, halfway between the two, and then 6 a.m. on the other side. So now that I've told you that, if you watch that motion, rewinding it, right, so we watch that motion, look at the lines of longitude. Every hour, a 15-degree rotation puts a new line of longitude in the path of the sun, and also on the opposite side, in the path of 12 uh, o'clock midnight. So this is what's controlling our day and night cycle. And if we take that and we project it onto a map, we have our time zones. Now, there is a piece of this that's political. Um, some countries have made decisions to go into the time zone of another area just so that they could be a little standardized with um, their home continent, so to speak, or their home country. But for the most part, every line of longitude marks a time zone. And if you are traveling west from the prime meridian, time gets earlier. You go back in time. Not literally, but uh, when it's a certain time at the prime meridian, any position west of that, it's going to be earlier in the day. And on the opposite side, if you're traveling east, the time is getting later. All right? You may know this from traveling to uh, your home countries uh, during the summer, like Israel, or if you go to Europe. Um, going eastward, when you arrive in that place, it's a later time than when you left. That's where jet lag comes from, because your body was um, accustomed to the time that you left at, and now it's a new time zone, so you're not going to go to sleep at the time that you're used to. Uh, well, you, I'm sorry, you're going to go to sleep at the time that you're used to, which doesn't always synchronize with the time of where you are. That's where that comes from. Um, so, you know, this is really a factor in helping us determine how much time is between different areas. Let's take a look at a sample question, right? Somewhat simple. So if it's 1 a.m. in New York City, what time is it in Denver? So in this particular question, they're giving you a time, 1 a.m., and asking you to look at the lines of longitude given and count backwards. So we know that New York City is east of Denver, so it's earlier because it's closer to the prime meridian. It's earlier in New York City than it is in Denver. So Denver would have to be a few hours back. Well, how many hours back? You count by lines of longitude. So if we're going backwards here, um, if it's 1 a.m. here, then we're going to go back about two time zones. Okay, So the eastern time zone, it's 1 a.m. If I go back uh, to an earlier time, this would be 12 a.m. 
If I go back even further, one more to the mountain time zone, this would be 11 p.m. So Denver is it's 11 p.m. in Denver when it's 1 a.m. in New York City. Okay, that was a simple example. We will take a look at some more complex ones and make our own time zone wheel in class. Thanks for watching.